Hey everybody, it's Joe with Jade Lake Photo, and today we're gonna to be talking about the new Sony A7 Riv. Okay, so Sony has announced their brand new flagship uh, A7 series camera. This is the A7R uh, Mark IV. It's coming in with some really amazing specs. Um, and we've got some raw files that we're going to take a look at, care of uh, Frono's photo, care of Jared Poland. But the thing that I am most interested about this camera is actually related to a video that I just did that just went up on my channel regarding the Canon uh, mirrorless flagship body that we're expecting to see before the Olympics next year and how this camera will, I think, impact that camera and the overall market with all the st uh, stats and, and specs that it's got loaded in. So let's not take a lot of time, let's jump in, talk about some specs, and then we will take a look at images out of this camera. So first things first, let's talk about the sensor itself. The sensor is coming in at a whopping 61 megapixels. So it's a 35 millimeter equivalent sensor uh, with 61 megapixels. Um, you know, that's been difficult to do at those really great uh, dynamic range levels, but we'll talk about that in a second. So this camera's coming in with 61 megapixels. It also has 567 uh, AF points in face detect, uh, as well as about 400 plus points in uh, contrast autofocus. Now those phase detect uh, points actually cover about 75% of the sensor, so that's really good, especially for folks who are trying to track fast moving subjects. You wanna make sure that you can always have your subject in the frame and in full focus. Now that is in continuous autofocus, but while it's in that mode, it can actually shoot up to 10 frames per second, which is extremely fast. Now, not as fast as say the 1DX, but that is super fast, but even with the 10 frames per second and the 61 megapixel, just gigantic um, sensor, we're also going to be able to shoot for, I think it's about five seconds, five seconds before you would actually fill up that buffer. So you're talking about 10 frames a second for five seconds. It's 50 frames before that buffer fills up at 61 megapixels. That's in raw, that is an awesome statistic. This camera is also coming with an advanced autofocus system that's going to allow for the eye autofocus that has been pioneered by Sony cameras and since introduced in other brands, but it allows you to do that eye autofocus um, both in still and now in video mode. So now you can get continuous IAF focusing on the eyeball uh, in video mode in this camera. And those still shots are going to be coming with 15 stops of dynamic range. That is huge. We were just talking about the future of the Canon lineup and how currently the two top end cameras in the Canon lineup are shooting at between 13 and a half uh, ish uh, stops of dynamic range and that we would hope to see something in the 15 uh, stop range. And now we actually have a competitor from, from Sony that is going to be shooting at the 15 stop range, uh, which now just becomes the, the number to beat, to be honest. Sony really has uh, raised the stakes in the market, especially with mirrorless bodies. Viewfinder is composed of a 5.76 million pixel OLED electronic viewfinder. Um, now I have not seen this particular viewfinder up close, uh, but I know that Sony really does an excellent job with their viewfinders and I'm excited to see this in action. Interestingly, this viewfinder can actually be adjusted to either 60 or 120 frames per second or 120 hertz, depending on the subject uh, that you're capturing through the viewfinder. In addition to all of these wonderful specs, it also has a five axis, four stop in body image stabilization system built into the sensor. We are still waiting for any kind of mechanical in body stabilization from Canon. Um, so this is a huge addition for this camera. And uh, when we talk more about the price, you'll understand why. Now, when it comes to video, this camera does shoot in full 4K. It will shoot with a full pixel readout without any binning if you are shooting with their Super 35 crop. Interestingly, when it's shooting in 4K, it's actually down sampling a 6K uh, signal directly off the sensor. So that's actually kind of interesting. I'm kind of curious to see how that's gonna look, if you're gonna get any artifacting or more A or anything like that. But I'm actually excited to see um, better quality coming out of some of these cameras from a video perspective. Now you get 15 stops of dynamic range on the photo side of things. On the video side of things with their built-in S-Log3 profile, you can get 14 stops of dynamic range, which is really great. 
Now it's not shooting in uh, in 10 bit, but you know we don't get everything that we want. Uh, it does, however, have dual card slots, both UHS-2 SD cards, which is really, really nice and should make this camera feel a bit more like a pro model in your hands. Sony's also taken their IBIS technology uh, and been able to kind of come up with a you know pixel shift option that allows you to take what would normally be a 61 megapixel image, stitch together something like 16 images and come out with a, uh, a 240 or 260 megapixel image. Um, you know, maybe for landscapes, this would be good. Of course, your subject really can't be moving for everything to match up. So there's a lot of caveats there, but there's some pretty cool opportunities that you could have uh, with that mode if you're shooting things that you want to be in super high resolution. So this camera is packed with improvements over the previous model and really packed with things that we've been wanting in the market uh, for, for a high-end prosumer camera for quite some time. What I think really makes this camera stand out, what I think really uh, is the difference maker here is the fact that it's going to do it all uh, below a four thousand dollar price point. So this camera is going to come in at about thirty five hundred dollars, uh, which we all know means within a year or so you'll probably see sales for thirty two hundred or twenty nine ninety nine. There'll be stuff on Black Friday, Prime Day, that sort of stuff. That in the next year this camera will become um, you know just a little bit less expensive. Um, for more updates, will come out to improve it and other models in the A seven line. And really, we're going to see a lot in this space coming soon, which makes me very excited because honestly, Sony is now going to be able to pressure Canon to push more out the door. Canon has already responded by saying that they're going to retake the megapixel crown, which I think is going to be the replacement for our 5D level studio cameras that we currently have uh, and really bump that megapixel level above 50 where it is now. But hopefully it will push them to include video features that are not, you know, completely handicapped with the additional, uh, you know, with corresponding pricing that is super affordable or at least attractive. And, you know, hopefully we won't be looking at a camera with similar specs as the Sony camera in the, you know, four to six thousand dollar range, which I literally just posted a video on the channel saying that I think that that's where they're going to be is at that five thousand dollar price point. Um, so I'm really hoping that they come out with a camera soon in the can in the Canon line that will compete with this new camera, because honestly, this looks super exciting. Uh, now, the only downside to this camera I see, uh, the main thing that I see uh, is the screen uh, on the back. Um, I don't like the fact that it doesn't flip out. Uh, you know, I do YouTube videos, so I need a flip out screen. It's very important to me. Uh, I understand for a lot of people that's not the most important thing, but I do actually use my flip out screen a lot, both for video and for photos, uh, when I'm not pointing the camera at myself. So there's a lot of times when I'm doing that and I find it really helpful. Um, so that really, I think that that's the only thing that I could see in this camera that I would want to see changed. Um, you know, the ergonomics of it, from what I understand, are much better. Uh, there's links uh, down below to the hands-on review um, from uh, Kai and from Jared Poland at Furnace Photos. Check those out, take a look at those. Um, and I'll also link to the raw images that Jared Poland made available. Um, I took a look at those and honestly, the quality and the uh, sharpness is just absolutely stunning in this camera. So hopefully, hopefully this will do what we've been looking for, which is to impact the market a little bit and make some changes and really push the other vendors to come out with some really fun stuff at price points that aren't in the five, six, seven thousand dollar $7,000 range. And that also don't really kind of make it clear that they want us buying their $10,000 cinema cameras either. Um, anyway, thanks for watching. Just my rant on the new uh, Sony uh, A7R4, uh, which is super exciting. I'm super excited that it's out. Um, hopefully this will do what we're looking for in the market. If you liked videos like this, go ahead and hit the like button. Uh, if you're interested in more info like this, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Hit me up in the comments. Thanks. See you in the next video.